Hi, I'm Dee and I have multiple sclerosis. The words, we think it's highly likely you have MS, were words that I never imagined hearing. And if you've just had a similar shock, I'm really sorry. But the words that came next are really important to me. The consultant said, now there are things that we can do and there are things that you can do. He told me to look up the MS Society and overcoming multiple sclerosis. The MS team have put me on some fantastic treatment, but knowing that there are things that I can do too have given me, has given me great confidence and I've found it to be really empowering. And that in turn has had a really positive effect on my mental health. I've spent the last couple of years researching MS and things that I can do to help myself. And I've decided to set up a YouTube channel, MS and D, where I can share those ideas in case it helps anyone. I'm going to start by talking about the biology of MS. The system that is responsible for coordinating our body is called the nervous system. And the nervous system is made of billions of cells that I've represented here, quite crudely, I apologise, um, called neurons. This is one neuron. We have billions of them in our nervous system. Now I'm just going to explain a bit about the neuron. Here we have things called dendrites. They receive messages from other neurons and then an electrical impulse gets stimulated to run all the way down this long extension here. This long extension here is called the axon. And those electrical impulses that travel along are really fast. If you think about how long it takes for you to think, I'm going to pick up that pen and then pick up that pen. That's really fast. Um, the axon is insulated by these sections here. These make up what is called the myelin sheath. They act as insulators in the same way that the plastic does on this cable. It makes sure the electrical impulse gets to where it needs to be and make sure that is fast. So I'm just going to show you how these neurons, neurons, they can be called neurons, that's why I made that mistake. The neurons connect with each other. So the electrical impulse, if I turn it so you, you can see it, comes from the dendrites. Um, across this gap, in fact, from another neuron across the gap via a chemical signal, and then it gets converted into another electrical impulse going down along the axon. And then when it gets to the ends, called the axon terminals, it quickly changes into a chemical signal before it then changes back into an electrical signal going along here again. So you have this massive network of neurons throughout your body, particularly in your brain and your um, your spinal cord, those are the ones where all the neurons are completely myelinated. So you can see the myelin sheath here. And those messages go from one to another, to another, to another, to another. Uh, the longest axon we have goes from our feet up to our spine. So that can be about a meter long. Now, before we move on any further, I'd like to just talk to you about what the myelin sheath is made up of. The myelin sheath is made by these cells called Schwann cells and they wrap around the axon like this. This is a cross section of the axon. They wrap around it. So it's really important the myelin sheath is kept intact to again, make sure the message goes where it, to where it needs to be and to make sure that's fast. Now, the next bit of biology I need to talk about is the composition of blood. So if we were to get somebody's blood and spin it in a machine called a centrifuge really, really fast, then it would separate into its constituent parts. All of the red blood cells would sink to the bottom and they make up about 41% of the blood. Those are the parts of the blood that carry our oxygen. The plasma carries all sorts of dissolved substances and carries proteins and so on. Um, that's 55% and the other 4% is made up of white blood cells and platelets. Platelets are involved in blood clotting. The white blood cells are the cells that are involved in our immune response. So when we have an invading germ, which in biology we call a pathogen, when we have an invading disease causing germ, 
then our white blood cells are there to attack it, to make sure it doesn't have the chance to reproduce and make us ill. One of the white blood cell responses, here's a white blood cell here, is to fire out these things you may have heard of called antibodies, these Y-shaped molecules. When they attack a particular cell, they can cause it to be destroyed. They respond to particular proteins on the cells. And it's the protein on the myelin sheath that we're going to consider later on in the video. In MS, our white blood cells actually attack our myelin sheath. So if you can see in this diagram, I've tried to represent that the Schwann cells are no longer creating that really strong um, layer of myelin around the axons. There were always gaps, they're really important because they let the axon have the things they need to have to continue carrying that electrical impulse. But here, the myelin sheath has been degraded, it's been worn down. And if the myelin sheath is degraded, it means that that message might not go to where it needs to go and it will be slower. And it's this that people with MS can have. MS is an autoimmune disease, which means that our white blood cells actually attack our own cells. The symptoms of this can be really varied. It can be numbness, dizziness, fatigue, but it really depends on which cells, which neurons in your brain or spinal cord have been degraded. The first thing, and possibly the easiest thing, we can do to help ourselves is to take vitamin D supplements. Our body can make its own vitamin D in the presence of sunlight. But I live in the UK and the sunlight is not always intense enough for me to manufacture that vitamin D. Also, it's quite common for me to only have my face visible and everything else wrapped up, which means that I will only make a face full of vitamin D, but not enough to, to support the rest of my body. So it's really important to take vitamin D. I was advised to take 5,000 units a day. This is much stronger than what you'd normally buy in a supermarket, for example. And I'm not a doctor, so I would always advise for you to go and get confirmation that this is the right dose for you by your MS team. But I have also seen that recommended in a paper by George Jelinek, by the author of this book. This book is one I would recommend to anybody with MS. It's absolutely full of ideas and reasoning behind them as to how we can help ourselves. MS is sometimes referred to as the Scottish disease. Uh, I don't think that's particularly helpful, but it does again back up that relationship of vitamin D production in the body and sunlight. The other thing I have stopped doing, which, which could be controversial, is I've stopped wearing a foundation with sunblock in it. And I know that's there to stop aging and have to accept that I'm potentially gonna age faster as a result, but the MS is much more important to me. So I now wear foundation without SPF. My children now have an increased chance of having MS. I mean, they always did, but now I know they have an increased chance of having MS or developing MS. Um, so I have also been advised to give them 2000 units of vitamin D every day. And this is the product I found. This must feel like real product placement here, but I haven't told the company I'm doing this and they haven't given me any money to do this. It's just that it took me ages to find these and I want to just share this so I can help in case that helps you. So this is these tablets, they're chewable ones because my children don't want to be taking um, tablets at the moment. So these are chewable ones, which is really good. They're a thousand units each, so my children take two a day. And then I've been told recently that when my daughter is 12, she can then go on to 5,000 units a day as I have. The next thing I want to talk to you about is drinking flaxseed oil. I first found out about this from listening to an Overcoming Multiple Sclerosis podcast. Now, flaxseed oil is really good because it contains lots of omega-3 fatty acids, and I'll go into the biology of that in a moment. 
Um, I use the one they recommend. I use I used to use other companies, but I just didn't like the taste. This one I find is much more pleasant. Uh, it's really important to keep it in the fridge, by the way, because flaxseed oil goes rancid, and if it does that, it will taste not very pleasant at all. So I just fill up one of these. On the podcast, they recommend 25 to 40 mils a day. So I fill up one of these, I drink it. And because I still am not a fan of drinking oil, I immediately follow it with an orange juice chaser to break up the film in my throat. So just as a quick reminder from the section of the video earlier, healthy neurons have this coating to insulate the axons, the long extensions that sends the messages around the body called the myelin sheath. And the myelin sheath is made by Schwann cells that wrap themselves around the axon. Now these red bits show the outside layer of the Schwann cells. The Schwann cells are made up of this jelly, jelly-like fluid here, and it's kept in the Schwann cell by an outer layer called the cell membrane. Now the cell membrane, if we had the ability to zoom in, would, um, would look a bit like this. It's got two layers and these bits here are the fatty acids. Now, if we have lots of saturated fatty acids, they look like this. The, the fatty acid chains are really straight now they have a force of attraction between them. When they're really straight, they can get really close together and then that force of attraction can hold them really close together. And that makes a membrane containing lots of saturated fatty acids um, very rigid, less flexible, and as a result, less resistant to attack by the white blood cells. Whereas, if your cell membrane is made up of lots of unsaturated fatty acids, they are very kinked. They've got lots of kinks in them, as you can see here, and that spaces them out a bit. As a result, they don't form so many strong forces of attraction between them, and the cell membrane as a whole is much more fluid. I mean, biologists call this the plasma membrane. It's supposed to be fluid. So this is a much healthier cell membrane than this one that's made up of lots of saturated fatty acids. Now, omega-3 fatty acids are excellent because just at the bottom, they have this big kink, which really keeps them apart from other fatty acids. Not completely apart, of course, but gives them that space they need for the membrane to be fluid and to make that membrane more resistant to attack from the white blood cells and more able to recover from it too. That last section about the omega-3 fatty acids and the cell membrane leads me nicely onto why we should avoid saturated fats. If our cell membranes are made mostly of saturated fats, they can't recover from an attack by the white blood cells as easily. So we need to avoid meat apart from seafood, egg yolks, dairy, they're all high in saturated fats. Um, so you might be thinking, well, I'll go onto a vegan diet then, but I should just warn you that lots of vegan replacement foods contain coconut oil and palm oil to give it that creamy texture. Those are also high in saturated fats. So we need to be avoiding coconut oil and palm oil. Um, to add to that, sadly, we should be avoiding cocoa butter because that's high in saturated fats too. In fact, going back to this Overcoming Multiple Sclerosis book, and I've referred to them a lot because they have been a huge source of information for me. The Overcoming Multiple Sclerosis organisation have also come up with on their website, and I'll put a link underneath the video and at the end of the video, um, this, this picture here that gives us a list of foods that we can avoid. That's uh, quite a lot to get your head around. And when I first started on the diet, I lost a lot of weight. It took me such a long time to work out recipes that I can eat with my family where they would equally enjoy them. So the other thing I'm going to do on this channel is make is share, share my recipes with you. The recipes I've now developed over time that I like and my family like that are low in saturated fats too. And looking at it positively, 
if we cut saturated fats out of our diet, that's going to make us healthier in so many other ways. I had my 40 year old health check a while ago and I was given a 0.28% chance of developing cardiovascular disease, which is in a way is great news. So a diet low in saturated fats is not a bad thing. The next thing I want to talk to you about is dairy. We should really avoid dairy products now. The Overcoming Multiple Sclerosis book has taught me that there is a protein in milk and not just cow's milk. So I even researched if I could drink other animals' milk and said, like, I would really love to eat goat's cheese, but I can't eat that either. There's a protein in milk that is very, very similar to the protein in the myelin sheath. When our white blood cells generate a response to attack that protein in milk, thinking that's an invading disease causing germ, they will also therefore have the antibodies in the blood ready to attack the proteins in the myelin sheath too. So the presence of milk in our blood will actually initiate a response that results in the myelin sheath of our neurons being damaged. So for me, dairy is an absolute negative. I'm just not going to have it. And I do feel lucky because if this was 10 years ago, it would be much harder to have to go dairy free. But now there are so many alternative milks out there. Um, it just takes a while to find the ones that you like. I really like uh, oat milk. And to be honest with you, I wouldn't have oat milk Oh, sorry, I wouldn't have cow's milk and tea now. I really like tea with oat milk and I have it with my Weetabix in the morning. I really think it's a great substitution. I also like hazelnut milk. It's really important for people with MS as much as possible to do lots of exercise. Exercise is brilliant for anybody. Exercise reduces inflammation and many of the symptoms of MS are caused by our body's own inflammatory response to the attack of the white blood cells on the myelin sheath. So if we can reduce that inflammation, that's a really, really good thing. To add to that, exercise produces endorphins. Those are chemicals in the brain that make us feel good. Um, exercise helps maintain and even make new neural pathways. That's, that's pathways consisting of lots of neurons going from one part of the body to another. I've got a whole list of things here, excuse me. It reduces fatigue. It helps us to maintain physical and cognitive function. Um, for me, the most important thing is it really helps with my confidence. When I'm holding some crazy pose in yoga, what I'm thinking is, I can still do this. And that's really, really good for my mental health. The bit that I haven't covered is stress reduction. Stress also produces inflammation. So that together with the inflammation caused by the MS itself can be really bad for our body. Um, I have a very, very intense job with very long hours and I have two young children and I do find it hard to just sit still and stop and I could recommend programs in all honesty I haven't stuck to them myself but I liked trying Headspace which is a free app it does have paid parts but you can use it for free um, there are also there's also lots of advice on mindfulness meditation and so on in the overcoming Mul multiple sclerosis website so if you can do this better than me, that's a great thing. I don't feel stressed all the time, but I don't give my brain that chance to stop. And that's the thing that I really have to work on. Um, I hope this video has been helpful. And I've held it up so many times because I cannot recommend enough that you read this book. I should warn you though, the first section is really hard to read and I cried my way through it. Then the next parts are all about what you can do. That's, that's really good. And that's the empowering part. And the last chapter is so positive. It's the way I feel about having MS most of the time. But I do know that if ever I get to the point where I'm just feeling really down about it, I'm gonna go to that last chapter every time. 
Thank you very much for watching and I really wish you well. Take care, thank you.